Hi, welcome to this first part of presentations about factors affecting enzyme action. Uh, we're going to be considering today the effects of uh, temperature, pH, enzyme concentration, subset concentration, although this first part will only focus on temperature. Last time I left you with some true-false questions. Uh, here are the correct answers. Um, enzymes are not fibrous, they are globular, so that was why that one is false. These two are both true, they are the correct answers. Um, enzymes are in particular highly specific, the active site is only a small part. Enzymes do lower activation energy. This one's false uh, because it doesn't affect its stability in any way. It, whilst it forms a complex and makes it easy to react, it's not affecting its stability. And that is a good or reasonable description of the induced fit model. OK, what factors affect enzymes? Well, we've kind of seen that from the initial uh, preamble. Um, temperature, pH and concentration of both enzyme and substrate. Uh, will all be factors which affect uh, rates of reaction, something you should be familiar with from GCSE. Um, and obviously it depends on the organism and the enzyme that we're talking about. Different organisms will have different optimum temperatures and pHs and we'll be looking at that shortly. Uh, enzymes can also be affected by something about uh, called inhibitors. Uh, that's a whole different ball game and a whole different presentation we're going to be looking at at a later stage. Let's think about temperature. Oops, let's reset to that. Uh, first of all, I want to think about how we measure the rate of actual reaction. Now, this is uh, a bit of maths again. It's about thinking about tangents. So, first of all, um, you're going to have a rate. This is an amount of product. Uh, I should say the volume, or uh, really rather than amount. Um, it depends on uh, the, the you know what reaction this is, whether it's a production of a gas, whether it's a production of a solid. It can be dependent on the time reaction, but the rate will increase for uh, over a period of time and then eventually level off as one of the other factors get changes eventually. So you need to draw your tangent. Uh, remember, a tangent is the steepest line you can draw. So that's the initial slope just here. Uh, and you continue that on as a straight line uh, and then choose a convenient whole time to draw it up to. So, for example, they've chosen here at 20 seconds because uh, go to there 20 uh, up there and 20 across unsurprisingly it gives you a nice whole number the intercept um, it's going to be where that uh, hits the y-axis the value uh, it's saying would recommend you know the amount of product produced after 20 seconds calculate the initial rate so the rate is amount of product divided by time so the product divided by the time gives you the amount of product form per second. So it's one centimeter cubed per second, 20 divided by 20 gives you that in, in measurement. So that's one way of calculating rate. Um, you can also use rate as one over time and that's described in your tech. It depends on what you are comparing it against. So um, how does temperature affect the enzyme? Well, with most enzymes, it works up to an optimum. So um, as you, uh, the temperature increases, this whole idea of kinetic theory takes effect. In other words, as particles get more and more energy um, from the temperature, it makes the particles move for more. As they move more, they're more likely to collide, um, collide because they're moving faster, and collide with more energy. So you get more successful and energetic collisions. If they're more successful energetic collisions, uh, then you increase the overall rate of reaction. Now remember, it's both the substrate and the enzyme that can be moving faster. Both of them will increase uh, uh, in their movement speed, not just one or the other. It's both that will be increasing. And they will continue to increase until we reach what we call an optimum. Optimum, remember, is the fastest possible rate. At the optimum, the enzyme is working at its best possible rate. In other words, every enzyme is occupied with breaking down a substrate and then refreshing and refreshing and refreshing. And then it talks about what we call the Q10. So for other words, for every 10 degrees centigrade rate, rate rise, you're getting a doubling of the rate. And we'll look at how that's calculated in a moment. 
Uh, it continues up to an optimum. Obviously, in humans, for some enzymes, the optimum is 37 degrees centigrade. Not necessarily true for every single enzyme in humans, but probably for most. Um, above that, then it starts to affect the enzyme 3D structure and it irreversibly starts to break it down. This is called denaturation. Remember, enzymes aren't alive, so they can't be killed in the first place, but they are denatured. Um, and that rapidly causes a sudden drop in the rate um, because no matter what, you're going to end up with uh, the enzyme being broken down and no longer being able to do its job. So uh, it's just a recap about the idea of kinetic theory. Molecules, remember, are constantly moving at random. This is known as Brownian motion, where some things bounce into and bump into each other. If you add them in, they can uh, mix um, enzyme and substrate together. Some of them will bump into water molecules. Others will bump into each other. When they bump into each other, they react um, and the product is produced. If you increase the temperature, you increase the speed of movement of all of the molecules, making them more likely to bump into each other and more likely to react up to a certain point. Denaturation then, how does it affect enzyme structure? Well, the tertiary structure of the enzyme is held together with lots of weak bonds. Um, and it can be hydrogen bonds, for example. The hydrogen bonds are pretty weak and they can be um, broken. broken. Um, if those bonds are broken, then it affects the overall shape. Remember, enzymes are complex three-dimensional shapes and it's the active site that is the key part to it. If you uh, heat it up so that the active site loses its shape, there's it kind of, it flexes first of all, and it's not as efficient. So that's where you get a dropping down of your graph starting to happen. As it continues to be uh, broken down, it unravels until it loses all of its tertiary structure. It's not going to lose its primary structure. Those are strong bonds, the peptide bonds, but the tertiary structure is lost, and that means it's denatured and can't be reversed, and you can't undo the changes. Think about cooking an egg. If you cook an egg, you can't undo the cooking of the white of an egg. It's still cooked. Uh, that's just a recap uh, graph there, showing you optimum uh, here, the idea of this is best possible and it tends to fall away more sharply after the optimum as that damage occurs to the um, protein structure. Q10, um, this is how you calculate Q10, um, the rate of reaction for one temperature, then the rate of reaction at that plus 10, divide one by the other, and you should end up, if it's doubling, of an answer of 2. If it's less than 2, it's not quite doubling. Yeah, so it's not being uh, going as fast as it could. Uh, so you might be expected to calculate this rate Q10 curve coefficient. So what is the rate at a certain temperature? What is at the rate at another 10? And see what the difference is. And you should be able to calculate Q10. Uh, there is a great worked example in the textbook that most of you are using. Uh, so please watch out for that as a uh, calculation you might be expected to do. Okay, we're going to pause there and then we'll kick off with the next presentation on pH.